Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today I have a video on object source lighting and this is a technique uh, that I feel a lot of people stay away from because it's terrifying. Uh, it's not terrifying because it's hard, it's terrifying because it comes at the end. Uh, you have finished painting your model, you've done all your washes, you've done all your highlights, you've done all your tones and base coats, everything is on point, you're happy and satisfied with the model and then you decide his staff is glowing and I need to make that shine off of his face. Uh, so the potential for failure is high and the potential for ruining all your hard work is also high. And I think a lot of people stay away from it for those reasons, but it's a technique that really makes your models pop. And as someone who's not a professional painter, more of an aspiring professional, uh, I just want to make my models look as good as I can make them. And OSL has a has been a technique that I have been um, hesitant to dip my feet into. And I just want to dive in today, and I'm going to dive in on camera so you can follow along and either uh, laugh or learn from my failure or be inspired by my success and we'll see how that goes. So let's just get down to business guys. Okay so I have my Nargolath uh, mint sculpt here from Reaper Bones 4 and I've already finished painting him up. He's pretty good to go. I could throw him on the table like this but I want to try and do OSL on him. So looking at the areas that are sources of light here we have his sword we have his face his mouth his eyes and then I painted his whip like it's fiery red so I want some light coming off that too so I'm gonna be hitting these areas his sword his glove his shoulder the his left side of his face probably the top of his hands and then the inside of the wing here where the whip would be kind of reflecting off that and maybe even the top of his tail. So the plan here is to take my marigold yellow which is kind of my second highlight color here um, with uh, golden glow being the brightest and then the only thing being brighter than that being white. So I won't be highlighting with white I'm just gonna start with marigold yellow and so I'm going to take that highlight and just spread it around on all the areas where I think light would be hitting him. So looking at it as his sword being the source of light, I'm kind of eyeballing where those lights are going to catch on his body. So I'm thinking his hand here, and I'm taking a good amount from my wet palette, putting it on, and then grabbing a second brush that is just full of water, and using that to blend it in. So the trick here is to build it up slowly. You want to do lots of thin applications because you can always add more but you can't necessarily take it away unless it's still wet. If it's still wet you can take it off. So I'm just going to start tracing out all the details, catching the highlights the same way I would highlight this guy uh, if I wasn't doing OSL. I'm just going to treat the sword as the source of light as opposed to the sun or, you know, the light coming from above him. So I'm going to blend it in on his hand and just slowly build it up. So once these areas start drying, I'll come back in and add a little more. I'm gonna highlight his belt buckle here, just the side of it that's close to the sword, and I'm gonna leave the other side totally bare. I'm also gonna hit the metal rivets on his uh, chest strap, and I'm gonna Hit the edges of that as well. It's a good opportunity here to use the highlights on his shoulder at the bottom because there would be no highlights there if I wasn't using OSL so those areas would be pretty dark and because metal reflects light a lot more than you know any kind of cloths would 
its uh, opportunity to make that kind of a dramatic highlight. I'm also using his, his knee and I'm going to hit his bicep too because those would be like shiny parts of his skin where the light would reflect the most. So I'm also going to put some on his base here because there's a couple skulls that are kind of within range. I'm just eyeballing where the light would go so if the light is going to go far enough to hit his belt buckle I figure the light will go uh, far enough to hit the skulls and the hoop uh, that is close to the sword. So the same technique for the sword, just going to be using that marigold and blending it in and if I feel like it's too intense I'm going to grab my brush that's all water and just kind of blend it in. Important to note, if you are doing this yourself and you feel like you've put too much on before it dries you can just wipe off your brush and make sure your brush is like dry and get all the paint out of it and then you can use it to kind of extract that color from where you've put it on and it will take a lot of that paint back off wipe it on a paper towel and repeat that process until you feel like you're at a good place with how much paint is on them the good thing about yellow is that it dries a lot duller than it applies so if you do feel like you've gone overboard it'll dry a little bit less overboard so it corrects itself a little bit but that does mean you need to do more layers to build up a nice bright highlight so I'm also hitting the side of his face that's close to the sword and his horn he has these really nice ram horns so there's a lot of texture on them and it'll take the highlight really well. While I'm at it I'm also going to try and highlight around his eyes. I've decided I don't want to highlight his mouth because I like how black his teeth are but his eyes are a good opportunity to create like a glowing effect. So like I was saying before you can always take the paint back off after wiping your brush off on a paper towel so I, I employ that technique a few times here on his left eye While I was painting this model um, for his base coats, I did a zenith highlighting method which resulted in the left half, his left half of his face being darker because it didn't catch the highlights from my airbrush. And so I don't want to overwrite that entirely, so I'm going really soft with the yellow highlights on that side of his face and focusing more on his horn. I'm also hitting his uh, loincloth here because if I'm hitting his belt buckle I should hit his loincloth. Also the, the metal takes the highlight really well so I'm just picking out areas of his skin that will highlight as well like his abs. This guy's fit. just building up on areas that I've already hit as they're drying while I've been painting his other areas. It's a good opportunity to come back in and just re-highlight it to build up that tone. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my golden glow which is the brightest portion of these highlights. So I'm only going to hit the areas that are close and, uh, and most reflective. So 
I'm going to hit his belt buckle a little bit and just the edge of his loincloth as well as his gauntlet here one tip of his uh, bicep just that center point where it's most bright and his knee in the same area and then the edges of his shoulder plate and just kind of all of his metal pieces that have gotten the most brightest parts of the highlight. I'm going to use this golden glow to edge highlight his gauntlet as well. I'm going to make sure I hold it in frame. I'm just going to grab all those details from his sword now. going to grab all those details with that golden glow. Any kind of nicks in his sword, I'm going to highlight those because it's closest to the flame, so it should be the brightest. But I am going to leave the dark parts of his sword dark because while it might not be the most realistic, I don't want to undo that contrast because that contrast looks really good when you put it on the table. So while in reality this whole sword might be glowing yellow, I don't want to paint it that way. I want to keep those, those darks dark. So I'm just going to highlight the edges. I'm going to hit the top of the skulls on the bottom of his base and then pick out the edge of his hoop and then pick some choice parts of his horn and a little bit on the side of his face. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now I'm just going to replicate all those exact same techniques super fast on his whip and wing. I'm not doing anything different, I'm just picking out the top of his hands, the tail, the spines of his wings, and the interior flaps of his wings that are closest to the whip. Same exact process, just using that marigold yellow, building it up in thin coats until I'm satisfied with how bright it is, and then I'm going to take the golden glow and just hit the most highlighted areas. And that's him finished. His wing will still take a little bit to dry, but that's all the paint I'm going to put on him. As easy as that. And there we have it, friends. Object source lighting. It's not so scary. I actually feel really good about it after doing it. Uh, it's kind of like a feeling of relief, uh, like I just bungee jumped for the first time or something. Uh, I was a little intimidated going into this. Uh, I really liked where the model was before I started the lighting, so uh, I felt like I had a lot to lose and a lot to mess it up. But you know what? I'm not someone who dips my toes in. I'm all or nothing. So. Uh, 
I just figured I'd do this. And hopefully watching this, you think it looks good. And two, uh, hopefully you're willing to try it yourself now because you know what? I feel like we should all just be trying to better ourselves, become better painters over time, better crafters, better DMs. We're never perfect, but we could always improve. And that's what I'm trying to do with myself. So hopefully you had a good time. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And I'd love you to comment down below about your OSL experience because I just want to learn from all you guys because you're all so talented. So uh, let me know down there in the comments. And if you want to see some more content like this, feel free to subscribe. I post new videos as often as I can. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.